Good day, City High North. This is again Teacher Pinkeros Amira for our new lesson. Let's have a quick recap. Can you still remember what are the essential factors in forecasting revenues and cost? Good job. So the essential factors that we have to remember in forecasting revenues and costs is that we would need to know the market price of a product and then we would need to compute for the selling price. So for the selling price computation that will be cost per unit times or multiplied by the markup percentage that you desired to have for your selling price. And then another essential factor is that we have computed for the projected volume a daily and then for our projected revenue daily. And we also did compute for our projected revenues monthly and annually. Now, let's take a look at our new lesson. But before we proceed, let's know our objectives. After this lesson, the learners should be able to 1. Compute for profits 2. Define profitability, liquidity, and solvency 3. Identify commonly used profitability ratios Let's define terms. First is we have to define profitability ratio. Profitability ratios can be compared with efficiency ratios, which is considered how well a company uses its asset internally to generate income as opposed to after-cost profits. Profitability ratios are a class of financial metrics that are used to assess a business ability to generate earnings relative to its revenue, operating cost, balance sheet asset, or shareholders' equity over time, using data from a specific point in time. So profitability ratios assess a company's ability to earn profits from its sales or operations and it indicates how efficiently a company generates profit and value for shareholders. Higher ratio results are often more favorable but these ratios provide much more information when compared to results of similar companies, the company own historical performance or the industry in average. So we have liquidity ratios. These are important a class of financial metrics used to determine a debtor's ability to pay off current debt obligations without raising external capital. Liquidity ratios measures a company's ability to pay debt obligation and its margin of safety through the calculation of metrics including the current ratio quick ratio and operating cash flow ratios. Liquidity ratios determines a company's ability to cover short-term obligations and cash flows while solvency ratios are concerned with a longer-term ability to pay ongoing debts. Solvency ratio is a key metric used to measure an enterprise's ability to meet its long-term debt obligation and it is used often by prospective business lenders. A solvency ratio indicates whether a company's cash flow is sufficient to meet its long-term liabilities and thus is a measure of its financial health. An unfavorable ratio can indicate some likelihood that a company will default on its debt obligations. So the main solvency ratios are the debt to asset ratios, the interest coverage ratio, the equity ratio, and the debt to equity ratios, which um, will be a further discussed in your financial subjects. We'll be computing a profits. Do you have any idea what is a profit? Remember that profit describes the financial benefit realized when revenue generated from a business activity exceeds the expenses, cost, and taxes involved in sustaining the activity in question. Now, let's compute the gross profit. 
remember, since we have defined already profit, so remember that profitability ratios are a group of financial statements that primarily determine the profitability of the business. The gross profit, we have the performa, which is net sales less cost of sales is equals to gross profit. By using this uh, formula, the gross of XYZ trading in the year 2017 has a net sales of 734,000 less cost of sales, which is 577,000, gives us a profit of 157,000. The term cost. Term cost refers to the purchase price of the product, including the total outlay required in producing it. Third is we have the gross profit rate. Gross profit rate measures the percentage of gross profit to sales, indicating the profit that the business realizes from the sale of the product. So to compute for the gross profit rate, we have the following formula. Gross profit rate is equals to gross profit divided by the net sales. So let's take, for example, the gross profit rate of XYZ trading for the year was computed. We have 157,000 divided by 734,000 which will give us a percentage of 21.38%. The gross profit rate may signal to the entrepreneur that the amount of margin on sales is 21.38%. This rate will be used to determine whether the amount of gross profit can cover the operating of the business since the gross profit rate of XYZ trading is 21.38%. The cost ratio to sales will be 78.6%. This information will help the entrepreneur in assessing whether the cost is too high or too low. Any product with a very high cost will not become competitive in the market, and the gross profit rate will also help the entrepreneur set the selling price. Here is we have operating profit margin rate. The operating profit margin is the second level of revenue in the income statement. It measures how much profit a company makes on a dollar or pesos of sales after paying for variable costs of production such as wages and raw materials but before paying interest or taxes. These are expenses incurred during a particular period only and are not expected to provide benefits to any future period. So we have the performa. So given we have the gross profit less operating expenses, so we have the operating profit margin. Operating margin is calculated by dividing a company's operating income by its net sales. Higher ratios are generally better illustrating the company is efficient in its operation and is good at turning sales into profits. So again, we have a case of XYZ. So there are no financing charges like interest, expenses, and income tax. Um, the amount of the operating profit margin is equal to the net income. So we have here an example. So the XYZ cross profit was 157000 less the operating expenses of 90000 will give us an operating profit margin of 67000 this information that the business realized an income of 67000 during the year after deducting the costs and operating expenses from the sales made. To compute for the operating profit margin, we have the formula operating profit margin divided by net sales. So remember, we have an operating profit margin of 67000 divided by the net sales of 734,000 will give us 9.128% or 9.13%. The operating profit of the business measures the percentage of profit available after deducting the cost 
of sales and operating expenses of the business. So a higher operating profit margins is favorable to the business. Next is we have to compute for the net profit margin rate. Or simply net margin measures how much net income or profit is generated as a percentage of revenue. It is the ratio of net profits to revenues for a company or business segment. Net profit margin is typically expressed as a percentage but can also be represented in decimal form. The net profit margin illustrates how much of each peso in revenue collected by a company translate into profit. To compute for the net profit margin, we have the performa. So operating profit margin, add interest income. That will be the total amount and then less interest expense. And then you may have as well your income tax deducted. So that will be your net profit margin. So let's have a solution. So the income statement of XYZ trading does not reflect any data on interest expense. Only income tax has been deducted from the operating profit margin. So we have 67,000, which is the operating profit margin less income tax of 20,100 will give us a net profit margin of 46,900. Do you understand that? Okay, let's proceed. Now that we have computed the net profit margin so we're now going to compute for the net profit margin rate so net profit divided by net sales so given that we have 46,900 as our net profit divided by the total net sales of 734,000 will give us 6.39 percent if we're going to round it off into the nearest hundreds So XYZ trading appears to have earned 6.39% of its total sales of 734,000 pesos during the year. This profit rate must be compared with those of other similar businesses within the industry. So this is our job as an entrepreneur that we have to check if our business is selling compared to other industry is we have to analyze the liquidity status of the business. Remember that we have defined already liquidity and liquidity ratios. So again, liquidity ratios are important class of financial metric used to determine a debtor's ability to pay off current debt obligations without raising external capital. Remember, in computing liquidity ratios is current ratio. Current ratio is a liquidity ratio that measures a company's ability to pay short-term obligations or those due within one year. So current ratio is in line with the industry's average of slightly higher is gener generally considered acceptable. A current ratio that is lower than the industry average may indicate a higher risk of distress or default in the business. The quick creation measures its short-term obligation with its most liquid assets, therefore excludes inventories from its current assets. Financial statements are important in a company management as means of communicating past successes as well as a future expectation. So that's why it is very important that we record all of the operating transactions such as our sales expenses and profits or losses so that we will be able to compute for our quick ratio. So we have the formulas to compute for the current ratio and quick ratio. Remember, in computing for the current ratio, we would need to have current asset divided by current liabilities, whereas for the quick ratio, all we have current assets uh, minus inventories divided by current liabilities or another way to compute for the quick ratio is that we have cash and equivalents plus marketable securities plus accounts receivables divided by current liabilities.
We have the return of investment or ROI which measures the amount of net income per peso invested to the business. Uh, the formula for ROI is we have the net income divided by average total assets. Future entrepreneur, one should always remember that nothing is permanent in the field of entrepreneurship. So we have to make assumptions. So uh, we're going to do some simple computation and let's have the following assumptions. Yearly, uh, we have an increase of revenue for 5% and yearly increase in cost is assumed at 5% as well. If we are doing projected um, balance sheets, so it is uh, very important that we gather, gather data from year one to three so that we can project for year four, five, six, seven, or eight, and so on. So we have here the following information. So we have the asset. So for the asset, we have a total cash for the first year of 337,398.56. And then we have liability. So it is assumed that on the first year, we don't have any liabilities. So we just leave it blank. And then we have the owner's equity, which is 337,398.56 cents. Remember that in balance sheet, it should be equal. Asset is equivalent to liabilities and owner's equity. So it should be balanced, as you can see here in our example. Take a look at the example. So we have Fitmoto ready-to-wear online selling business. And there we have the projected five-year income statement. So as you can see, for the first year, we have the revenue of 1,545,673.95 cents less the cost of 1,213,275.38 will give us a gross profit before tax of 332,398.56. So remember that we made assumptions that for the revenue, there is an increase of 5% and then for the cost, there is an increase of 5% in consecutive years. So to compute for that, we have For the year two, we're going to take the amount of 162,957.64 multiplied by 1.05. Again, why did we use 1.05? Since we are assuming that there is an increase of 5%, so generally that's 100 plus 0 0.05, or the 5% will give us 1.05. So we use 1.05 so that it will be easy for us to do the calculation. So 162,957.64 multiplied by 1.05 will give us 1,704,105.53 cents for the year three. As you can see in the problem that we have for the revenue, it increased by 5%. So for the year three, we have 1,704,105.53. And then if we're going to multiply that by 1.05, will give us 1,789,310.80 cents per year, four, and so on. So uh, do you have any question and how we did uh, the assumptions and computation for the computation of gross profit in the end for our revenue and cost. All right, good job. Now it's your turn to compute. Go on page 30, activity one, and we're going to do some computation. So we have their direction, show your solution and answer the given problem on your paper. So one, Annie bought one dozen smartphones for 300,000 pesos with a discount of 5%. She sold half dozen at a price of 18,000 per unit. 
However, a new model of smartphone became available in the market, so she sold the remaining half dozen at 12,000 each unit. What was her profit or loss? So we have to compute for the following gross profit rate, operating profit margin rate, net profit margin rate, and return on investment. So to compute all of this, remember that I have given you formulas for your references. So there you have it, guys. I hope that you have learned today. Thank you for listening and have a great day. Keep safe and keep smiling.